Cognitive and Sociocultural Theories of Piaget and Vygotsky, presented by Christine Clark, Deborah Holt, and LaToya Terry. Jean Piaget was born in 1896 in Switzerland. As a teen, Piaget experimented with several subjects, including biology, malacholy, and psychology. His mother battled with mental illness, which partially led to Piaget pursuing psychoanalysis with Carl Jung in Zurich in 1918. By 1919, Piaget landed in Paris at the Alfred Bien Institute, where he standardized Sir Cyril Burt's reasoning tests. Through interviews with children, Piaget began to realize that children do not have the same problem-solving ability as adults, and he sought to understand why that was developmentally. In 1921, Piaget became the director of the Rousseau Institute in Geneva. Later, he became the director of the International Bureau of Education, and after that, he taught at many major universities, including the University of Geneva and the Sorbonne. Jean Piaget believed children are active thinkers, constantly trying to construct more advanced understandings of the world. Piaget's big question was how does knowledge grow? Previous theorists surmised that children are less adequate thinkers. But Piaget determined that children did not ask the same type of questions adults asked. They were qualitatively different. His observation about the difference between children and adults' thinking led Piaget to be the first to theorize about cognitive development in children. En effet, le vrai problème de l'éducation, c'est quel est le but de l'éducation Est-ce qu'il nous faut former des enfants et des individus qui soient simplement capables d'apprendre ce qui est déjà connu, de répéter ce qui est déjà acquis par les générations antérieures Ou bien est-ce qu'il s'agit de former des esprits novateurs, des esprits créateurs qui soient capables d'inventer dès le niveau de l'école et ensuite pendant toute leur vie dans le domaine Piaget's basis for cognitive development is predicated on the following ideas and terms. Cognition. It's the brain's ability to process and store information and use them to solve problems. Hierarchical and invariant. Cognition development begins at the same place for every child and builds upon itself. Children do not skip around from place to place. Object permanent. An object does not cease to exist if it is out of sight. Egocentrism. Young children have a soul perspective. They are the center of the universe. Transductive reasoning. It's a faulty logic used in making inferences about an, one object to what another object might have. Schemas. Our cognitive framework that helps children understand their environment. Assimilation. Children recognize similarities between objects and are able to classify them by things they already know. Accommodation is a higher level of thinking than assimilation, in which children recognize differences between objects. Conservation is the realization that certain attributes of an object are the same unless something is added to or taken away from that object. Equilibration 
is the process of balancing assimilation and accommodation. Piaget was the first developmental psychologist to create a theory of cognitive development. He studied children at the clinic where he worked, and he observed his three children develop as they grew older. He surmised that developmental changes in children are qualitatively different. As children of varying ages approach ideas differently. Piaget believed that children learned through schemas, which provide both a category of knowledge and a process for learning. Children rely on past schemas to interpret their current environment. Children use assimilation to process the current environment and relate it to things that they already know about. Accommodation is when children use new information to alter an existing schema and in this process create a new schema. Equilibration is the dynamic process of balancing assimilation and accommodation. Piaget believed that equilibration is key to ongoing cognitive development. Piaget came to this conclusion after examining children interact with their environment. He believed that cognitive development happens in four stages. In Piaget's theory of cognitive development, there are four stages. The first is the sensory motor stage, and it progresses from birth until two years of age. The second is the preoperational stage for children from two to seven years of age. Third is the concrete operations with seven to 11 year olds. And fourth, the formal operation stage for 11 years old and older. In the first stage, the sensory motor stage, there are six substages. The first for children birth through one month old are simple reflexes. They're characterized by reflexes such as rooting and sucking. The second substage is the primary circular reactions for children one to four months of age. During this substage, infants learn to coordinate sensations. It's a primary circular reaction when the infant tries to reproduce an event that happened by accident. For example, sucking his thumb. Third is the secondary circular reaction in children four to eight months of age. Children become aware of things beyond their own body and become more object oriented. For example, accidentally shaking a rattle and continuing to do so for the sake of satisfaction. Fourth is the coordination of secondary circular reactions in eight to 12 month olds. In this substage, children start to show intentionality. For example, they use a toy or a stick to reach something that is out of their reach. Fifth is the tertiary circular reactions in 12 to 18 month olds. They start to explore new possibilities of objects during this stage. And sixth is the internalization of schemas. It's a shift toward symbolic thinking. This developmental period is very egocentric based and cognitive development occurs as the baby uses sensory input combined with motor activities. An example is a baby lying on its back under an interactive mobile. The baby kicks its legs and grabs at items dangling down from the top. The baby laughs, kicks, and grabs for more as they cause the floor mat to rattle, sway, and make noise, which gives them joy. This activity teaches babies to demonstrate goal-oriented behaviors, which include baby thinking about what he or she wants, planning how to get it, and following through with an action. The activity also teaches a baby how to focus on an object. In the beginning stages, the baby 
only recognizes that an object exists when they can see it. But as soon as it is covered up or hidden behind something, the baby forgets about it. This object is called object permanence, which is demonstrated in the Calvin and Hobbes comic. At age three to four months, peekaboo is a relevant and fun activity. <laughs> Later in the sensory motor stage, the baby recognizes an object, such as a ball, when it is visible, but they also remember when it is out of sight and under a blanket which is the, an achievement of object permanence. Stage two is the pre-operational stage. A child transitions out of the sensory motor stage and enters into the pre-operational stage at two years of age and remains there until they turn seven years old. During this time, children begin to develop the use of symbols, develop language, memory, and imagination. These five years are broken down into two substages. The preconceptual stage lasts from ages two to three, and during this time, symbolic representation plays a key role in development. It does this through play and imitation. It's not uncommon to run into a two, three, four-year-old dressed up as their favorite character running around the grocery store. Children at this age tend to latch on to a favorite cartoon character like Dora and spend a great deal of time dressing up and acting out what they watch on TV. It's also in this stage that children begin to look at the world as separate from themselves. Their language is continuing to develop and they can put a few words together. They learn to develop sentences and they begin to follow directions and rules. The second substage of the pre-operational stage is the intuitive stage. It is during this stage that children ages four to seven years old continue to approach categorizing the world at a higher level. Piaget began this at, during this age group conducting experiments to show how reasoning and logic develop schematically over time. Piaget's experiments demonstrate that children at this stage are not yet able to understand the conservation of constancy. Can you look at these two glasses? Do you think that they have the same amount of juice? Mm -hmm. You think they have the same? Okay. Yeah. Now we're going to pour this juice into this glass. Now, do you think that this glass has more juice, this glass has more juice, or do you think that they have the same amount? That one has more. This one has more, and why do you think that this one has more? Because the, it's taller. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, does this row have more?
As was shown in the previous two videos, children in this intuitive substage do not yet understand the conservation of constancy. However, the language in this age group is beginning to develop further and they are demonstrating transductive reasoning. This is where a child can think about two or more experiences without using abstract logic. For example, if a child sees his mother making a cake, he then assumes that there will be a birthday party since the last time she made a cake, they took it to a party. The third stage is the concrete operation stage in which children from 7 to 11 years of age find themselves. During this stage, they begin to develop and demonstrate logic, and they recognize that symbols represent objects. They also are able to understand the concept of conservation. In the previous video we watched, a study like Piaget performed was shown in which the same amount of liquid was poured into a different vessel and thus looked different. Children in the preoperational stage only recognize, based on spatial visual logic, that it is different. However, children in this stage are able to use their logic to understand that the amount of volume, the amount of liquid is the same, despite being in a different shaped vessel. In this stage, children also begin to acknowledge that others have a perspective that may be different from their own. And they also come to know that what they think others think of them may not necessarily reflect reality. Stage four is the formal operation stage. It's for children and adults 11 years of age and older. During this stage, they have improved reasoning skills as Calvin shows in the comic below. Perhaps his logic is still a bit faulty, but he does have good reasoning skills and that he wants to know if what he's doing is preparing him for the future. Children and adolescents in this stage also begin to develop abstract thinking. As they develop their abstract thinking and begin to think about less concrete ideas, they can improve their skills by participating in logic games like the one seen on your screen or even Sudoku puzzles. This way, this way, they begin to reinforce their ability to think past the here and now. As children and adolescents develop the abstract thinking skills, they also begin to develop problem-solving skills that go beyond what they can see now so that they can see what is hypothetically possible. Dynamically, they are also able to analyze this vision through a cost-benefit analysis. This formal operation stage includes metacognition, which is the ability to think about and ponder their own thoughts within the problem solving process. Gaining this metacognition is an evolving process that takes more effort at the beginning of the formal operation stage and does not rely alone on brain development. Adolescence is also the time during which social and moral cognition advance rapidly. Therefore, the children develop a sense of identity and are also able to weigh the social and cultural considerations of what they're doing in conjunction with universal moral values. Now we move on to Vygotsky. Lev Vygotsky was born in Russia in 1896 to a middle-class family. He graduated with a law degree from the University of Moscow in 1917 and taught secondary school after graduation. Vygotsky completed a research project from the Institute of Psychology in 1925 and wrote six books about psychology. He eventually pursued a full-time career in psychology 
as he wanted to pursue both of his passions, which were teaching and understanding how people learn. Unfortunately, Vygotsky battled tuberculosis until he died of it in 1934. His theories were initially repudiated by Stalin and lived on only through his students. But after the Cold War ended, his theories became widely known and adopted, especially in Russian schools. Vygotsky's big question is, how do cognitive and language development relate to learning? He studied contemporary theorists like Jean Piaget, Marie Montessori, and Sigmund Freud. Vygotsky wanted to understand how children can perform tasks beyond their own developmental level. He believed that cognitive development occurs largely due to social interactions, through children playing make-believe, and through the use of basic tools of intellectual adaptation, which they're taught by others in their culture. Vygotsky is considered to be the founder of the sociocultural developmental theory. After studying his contemporaries, including Piaget, he concluded that their theories were too simple and that learning came from external interaction and not a universal genetic process. Vygotsky attributed culture to developmental differences around the world. His theory was undergirded by the use of language and symbols within a historical context. For example, People in literate cultures may make lists or make entries in their calendar to help them remember things, whereas individuals in South America might tie knots and ropes to aid in their memory, or the Aborigines in Australia use ritual sticks to help them remember and teach history. Unfortunately, Vygotsky's theory was not complete due to his early and untimely death. Unfortunately, Vygotsky's theory was not complete due to his early and learning and development are interrelated from the child's very first day of life, according to Lev Vygotsky. To understand Vygotsky's theory, there are some terms and ideas that we need to understand. The first is construction of knowledge, which is the interaction between children that contributes to the way they learn about things. The second is executive functioning. This means that preschool age children are able to apply cognitive control. Third is the more knowledgeable other, or MKO. This is a teacher, a friend, a computer, a peer, or other person that can offer assistance in learning. Private speech is when a child talks vocally to themselves to direct their actions. Scaffolding is the assistance a teacher or peer offers a child at the right time. And the zone of proximal development is the distance between the most difficult task a child can do alone and the most difficult task a child can do with help. Sociocultural theory is the idea that human learning is a social process and that the origination of human intelligence is found in society and culture. There are two concepts that play a role in the development of cognition and social interaction and the zone of proximal development. Social interaction plays a fundamental role in the development of cognition. Vygotsky says, every function in the child's cultural development appears twice. First, on the social level, 
and later on the individual level. First between people, interpsychological, and then inside the child, intrapsychological. This applies equally to voluntary attention, to logical memory, and to the formation of concepts. All the higher functions originate as actual relationships between individuals. The zone of proximal development is the distance between one's actual developmental level and the potential developmental level based on the help of a more knowledgeable other. This concept demonstrates how much more a child can achieve with the help of others than they can by themselves. To help a child grow cognitively through the zone of proximal development, there is a theory called scaffolding in which methods are used to assist the child with learning and processing new information through the help of others. For example, a child does not want to finger paint with the rest of her class because her parents taught her about not being messy and so she's not sure what to do. The teacher wants to expand the child's creative imagination, so she takes the child by the hand and without forcing her, she shows her how to dip her fingers in the paint and then put it on the paper and clean her hands. In addition to the zone of proximal development and the social and cultural needs, Vygotsky has four basic principles known as the Vygotskyan framework. First, children construct their knowledge and their behaviors through cultural and social interactions. A child develops because of their interactions and not because of an internal developmental process that everyone goes through. Second, social interactions and cultural tools lead to development and development itself cannot be separated from its social context. Third, learning can lead development through teaching and utilizing the zone of proximal development. Children learn more in conjunction with adults and or more knowledgeable peers than relying on their own problem-solving abilities. Fourth, language plays a central role for two main reasons. Language provides a means of communication to share knowledge and to collaborate. Vygotsky defined three types of speech. Social speech to communicate from the age of two. Self-directed private speech which starts at the age of three. And silent inner speech which develops around seven years of age. Silent inner speech is used for thinking and not communicating. To further clarify Vygotsky's theory, to further clarify Vygotsky's theory, let's take a look at what, what sociocultural theory is and what it isn't. It is a group of theorists that talk about cognitive development with strong social and cultural perspectives. Vygotsky's theory demonstrates the interdependence of social and individual processes. And it's a theory that highlights the importance of language in mental development and of mental development in language. What it is not is a complete cognitive theory. It is not backed extensively by Vygotsky's own research or his experiments as he died before he could complete the theory and do the research to validate his ideas. Within this theory, there are several domains of development which Vygotsky addresses. The first is the social. Social interactions are the foundation of this theory. Children develop knowledge through play with peers and guidance from adults, older children, and peers around them. 
The second domain of development that's addressed is language. Language gives children the ability to recognize, examine, and to solve problems. It also increases um, through use in continuing social interactions. the cognitive domain. In this domain, progress is made through social and cultural interactions and effective pedagogy, as well as personal experiences, increase knowledge. Finally, what are the similarities and the differences between Piaget and Vygotsky? For Piaget, he believed that there were universal universal stages and aspects of development, but Vygotsky believed that development is culturally specific. Piaget said that children internally construct their own knowledge without outside assistance, whereas Vygotsky said that children learn through interacting with physical and social environment. Piaget said that thought develops prior to language which does not have a great emphasis in his theory. However, Vygotsky focuses on language. And initially, he believes thought and language are separate, and then they come together around the age of three when private speech begins. Piaget thought independent learning and construction of knowledge was brought about through a biological process. Vygotsky believes that learning occurs within social context, through interaction with peers, more advanced students, and teachers. And finally, Piaget believes that development precedes learning, whereas Vygotsky believes that learning can precede development as in the zone of However, Piaget and Vygotsky are both alike in that they are constructivist theories, and they believe that social interaction is essential for logic, for learning, for the construction of knowledge. They both also focus their theories on the individual, the development and growth of an individual child. Let us now turn our attention to the use of Piaget and Vygotsky in present times. Both the stages of cognitive development asserted by Piaget and the sociocultural theory begun by Vygotsky are widely used in preschools and primary education today. Many secondary schools that offer a degree in teaching also utilize Piaget's stages of development to teach developmentally appropriate ways to educate students based on cognitive, social, emotional, and physical needs. This includes things such as having an appropriate environment full of manipulatives, stations in which to pretend, technological toys, and room for experimenting. Also, the classrooms need to use developmentally appropriate curricular activities. Piaget's theory has been used to influence written curriculum and to influence constructivist models of learning. Some examples of Piaget's influence in constructivist learning are recognizing the interests of the children and assisting them in using these interests to create new schemas. These schemas help children in this stage understand their environment. Then the teacher can use the child's interest plus the new schemas to provide scaffolding for learning.
Piaget in classroom, it is also important to acknowledge the process of a child's thinking and not merely their product or answer. This relates to Piaget's theory in that the teacher is seeking to understand where the child is developmentally so that she can then help them achieve a higher cognitive thinking. Another is that rote memorization of information created by adults does not allow the children to experience and gain their own cognitive understanding of ideas. Knowledge must be constructed, not given. That's why the traditional teacher as expert is not part of the Piaget in classroom. Also, all children are going to move through the stages in sequence, but each child does so at his or her own rate. Therefore, classrooms such as these must be set up in such a way to meet each child where they are. This is similar to the current practice of differentiation in the classroom. One specific way teachers utilize Piaget's theory in the preconceptual and concrete operations stage is in teaching about one property of an element staying the same while another property changes. For example, if you give a child a Play-Doh and allow them to play with it, they learn about conservation of constancy. First, they receive two balls of Play-Doh that are the same shape. The child says they're the same size. Then one ball is flattened out or rolled into a snake. At the early stages of development, the child believes that the two pieces of Play-Doh are no longer the same. However, as the child progresses through the stages, they begin to recognize that the Play-Doh is still the same size, even though it's a different shape. This conservation of constancy teaches about relationships of properties, such as size, shape, and color, and how they apply to physical and abstract ideas. Activities like this are important for teachers to use in order to effectively teach abstract ideas so students can be developmentally ready to learn other abstract ideas, such as math. Another way that teachers help students understand conservation of constancy is to point out similarities and differences as they read and move through instructional time. Another way Piaget's theory is utilized in the classroom is that once in the concrete operational stage, children can increase their mental construction through classroom activities that require them to participate in whole activities instead of isolated skills. These whole activities help them to construct, construct new schemas. An example might include running a class store and taking turns with each of the jobs, or working on a class newspaper with writing, editing, advertising, and layout. For example, sixth grade students operate Nibbles and Scribbles, the school store at Central Middle School in Burlington, Illinois. The teacher, Marley Ferguson, runs from her math classroom. I was looking for a project that would integrate multiple curriculum areas with real world context. The school store does all of that beautifully, explained Ferguson, who introduces students to every aspect of retail operations. The students have earned as much as $3,000 to distribute to local charities. Let's take a look now at how Vygotsky's theories are used in the classroom. Lev Vygotsky says, through play, the child develops abstract meaning separate from the objects in the world, which is a critical feature in the development of all higher mental functions. Vygotsky's theory of play and the zone of proximal development and scaffolding are often used in preschools and primary schools. As far as the theory of play, Vygotsky believed that children learn through play as they act older, impose rules on themselves, and create knowledge with their peers. For example, if the students are playing restaurant, they will have plates and maybe plastic food. At a young age, they try to eat the plastic food, but as they develop, they begin to use imaginary plates or food, and they know to pretend to eat the food. 
While in a Vygotsky in classroom, it may look like the children are playing, as is demonstrated through this cartoon, they're doing far more than just playing. They're learning about cooperation and problem solving. They're learning about developing gross motor skills and their vestibular and balance systems. Vygotsky believes it is this type of constructionist play that leads to the zone of proximal development. The zone of proximal development is the distance between what a child actually knows and what a child can accomplish with help. In the classroom, this can be done through instruction aimed at strategies that help children accomplish tasks through cooperative learning and scaffolding. Scaffolding provides a framework for contrasting knowledge. In this example, the more knowledgeable other assists the child in counting by suggesting the child divide the bears into colors. Then another assist came as she suggested the child, child touch each bear. Very good. This time, why don't you line all the red ones up as you count them? So take them out and line them up in a line. One. Good boy. Two. Three. Yep. Oh, hang on. Is that one red? No. Oh, it's blue. We should get all the red ones together first and then you can count them all. That's it. Good. Is there any more? Nope. Oh, yeah. Okay, now try and count them for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, can you count them again? And this time, touch them when you count them. One, touch each one. Good boy. Two, yep. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You did it! Both Piaget's stages of cognitive development and Vygotsky's sociocultural theory are used extensively in preschool and elementary education today. While there is no controversy, while there is controversy surrounding both theories, they continue to be the basic structure of many classrooms and learning environments. In many places, such as the BMP Model Elementary School, the theories are used together to provide the best education. At the school, they have small classrooms of 15 or less with a teacher and a paraprofessional in each room. The students are assigned to classes based on their instructional need or their developmental stage, not necessarily their age. The children in younger grades are encouraged to interact with their environment physically and learn through experience. As the children progress, they begin to use more of Vygotsky's zone of proximal development and scaffolding through various types of group work to continue their learning. We hope that you've enjoyed this presentation today and learned a little bit about Piaget and Vygotsky. Thank you for your time.